guys. Happy Saturday. I wanted to share my goal setting system with you. Um, granted, I'm a little late. It's uh, Jan middle of January doing this, but I don't know about you, but we have been sick with the flu now for over two weeks on and off. No fun. But I'm here and um, I have a ton of information to share with you. This is one of my favorite times of year because goal setting is my jam. And it's when I think about like one of the uh, most pivotal moments in my personal life, my business life, my career, everything like this was a game changer for me. Something that I have been doing since 2006 as far as like following a system and just repeating it every single year. Yes, I've tweaked it and made changes to it. Um, but for the most part, I'm following the same exact system that I was taught. And then, like I said, just kind of, you know, made it my own throughout the years. So I know a lot of people talk about setting goals and um, especially New Year's resolutions and especially this time of year. For me personally, um, I kind of do this system almost every quarter um, because once you get in a groove of setting goals and working towards hitting those goals, then you start to achieve your yearly goals in six months or even in a quarter. It, Crazy, I know. Thank you. I'm excited too. First, I was gonna go for bangs, and then it turned into the sweet bang. And I don't have any product in it right now because I'm allergic to every single product right now. And that's another video. But <laughs> thanks, I'm excited too. Um, okay, so if you have pen and paper, here we go. So um, first of all. I want to share a really quick story with you to, sh to share you share with you how relevant this is and how it has changed all areas of my life. So in 2006, so we're talking now 12 years ago, I applied to become a presenter for Shalene Johnson's company, which was Powder Blue Productions. At that time, um, that was the, you know, the creators of Turbo Kick and Pio and Hip Hop Hustle. And What's crazy about that is I flew to California. I went to a camp. It was like a weekend long audition camp to become a presenter for her company. And I went there thinking like I had to be super fit and I had to be like on top of my A game with teaching skills. And I also thought like I'm never going to get picked. Well, I'm sharing this with you because when I got there, um, I should have known by the seven page application to join her team <laughs> that it wasn't going to be all about fitness. And in fact, it was less to do about fitness and more to do about she was looking for um, a particular type of person. And I think that that person was someone who was willing to grow. And at that point in my life, Thanks, Shauna. At that point in my life, I was. So I was open and willing to listen, teach me everything about Turbo Kick, but it had very little to do to turbo, with Turbo Kick. Anyways, this was something that she taught us at that camp. And at the time, I didn't think too much of it. But when I, when I think back now about one of those pivotal life-changing moments, this was one of them. So in short, she had us take out a piece of paper and a pen, and she said, I want you guys to just write out 10 crazy awesome goals that you would like to achieve in the next 12 months. She's like, I don't want you to think, overthink it. I want you to write out 10 goals in all areas of your life and 
it would be like crazy amazing at the end of the year if you were to achieve these goals. Now, I had never written out goals before. Like most people, you think about goals, you think like this would be cool or this would be awesome, but you don't actually write them down. Or maybe you do write them down, but maybe they're like a weight loss goal or a fitness goal. They're not actually like digging into like your family and your personal life and your profession and your, your income and things like that. So we wrote out these 10 goals, and honestly, I didn't even know what I wrote down. I literally was like, okay, this would be cool, and this would be cool, and this would be cool, and this would be cool. 10 goals. And um, one year later, I opened the mail, and there was a self-addressed envelope, and it was my handwriting, and I had no clue what was inside, and I was literally like, this is really weird. Okay. How is this my handwriting? I didn't even know what it was. One year later, okay? Now, I never wrote those goals down anywhere else. Like, I didn't um, put them on another piece of paper. I didn't make a photocopy. If you paid me a million dollars, I couldn't tell you what I wrote down on those 10 goals, okay? So when I got the mail and I opened it up and I realized it was the 10 goals that I had wrote out in a hot pink highlighter, that you could barely read some of them because they had faded over time. I was like, I got chills. I literally was like, I think I was sitting on the floor in the hallway of my house. And um, I achieved eight out of those 10 goals. And I literally like was like starting to cry and throw up and jump up and down all at the same time. I share that with you guys because there is a power in the universe <laughs> when you put out to the world what you want to achieve and then you go to work and you let your passion be known, the stars align and the law of attraction comes to you and you start to achieve the things that you really want in your life. Um, now you might be like, yeah, pfft, whatever, but I'm telling you, that it's true. It's true because those 10 goals I wrote down, I didn't even know what they were. But that year, that first year that I worked as a presenter for Shaleen, I did more in that one year in my profession. Um, I was, I read more books. I went to more seminars. I did more certifications. I did more in one year than I had done in the past 10 years of my career. And that was having the influence of someone else and pushing me to, to, to go after new things. And um, that's, that's the influence that Shalene had on me. And so when I looked at those, everything that I achieved, I was like, like, what if this, like actually works like what if you actually really sit down and think about what you want to achieve and put it on paper um so that was the beginning of a new a, a new uh, revelation in my life that was 2006 every single year since 2006 I do this, so I'm going to share this with you. Um, I've gotten better at it. I know what the goals are now. <laughs> I have a system. I'm really organized with it, and no matter what you are looking to do, if this is just, if your goals are for your personal life, for your family, for your education, for your career, for your finances, whatever it is, that's totally up to you. Um, and that's why this is so awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to go through a little bit of this with you because I could do like a whole workshop. In fact, I've thought about doing a one-week goal-setting group, a free group. So if that is something that interests you and you want me to like dig deeper on this stuff, then you should comment below and um, I will do that. If I get enough people, I will, I will do that. So the first thing is you write out, you take pen to paper and you write out 10 goals that would be amazing for you to achieve them by the end of the year. So when you, you get to December 31st and you get to New Year's Eve on 2018, um, you're reverse engineering your year, your creating the year that you actually want to happen versus you just thinking like just instead of going day to day blindly. That's really what this is. So these 10 goals are wishes. 
your wishes on paper. You're not writing things down that you know are already going to happen. You're writing things down that would be crazy, awesome, cool if they did happen by the end of the year, okay? And they can be in all areas of your life. It should not take you long. I just sat down and wrote mine out right before this video. I've already been thinking about where I want to go, what I want to do this year, what I want my personal life, my business life, my career, what, what are things I want to do this year. I've already been thinking about those things, but I haven't been, I haven't wrote them down on paper. You have to write them down on paper and you can't overthink it. You can't write it down and then go, oh, well, I, yeah, I don't know about that. That's not the point. The point is this is supposed to be fun. Okay, so that's number one, and it's all areas of your life. So that's going to be the second thing that I talk about is the categories, okay? So number one, write uh, down your top ten goals. And the other, the other thing I want to say about that really quick is these goals – at the end of the day, the whole purpose of them is they're supposed to make you happy, right? So if you're setting a goal that at the end of the day isn't going to make you happy, then why are you setting a goal in that area, right? Um, and they're also goals that will change your life for whatever reason. They will, they will change your life in a positive way. Okay. Number two is the category. So when you think about 10 goals, you're not just writing down business goals or career goals. We, we all tend to be more obsessed in one area of our life, right? I'm definitely a worker. So, um, my goals can tend to be more on the business and finances side, but in the past few years and becoming a mom, they have definitely shifted and I've created more balance in my life. So these are some of the categories you want to think about in your 10 goals. Faith, family, fitness, you're writing these down, right? Business, finances, recreation, self-care, education, and the one that I personally have added in since last year is organization. I'm completely obsessed with organizing my life. I need to just do videos on that. Um, so let's just talk about some of these. So when you think about like family, um, it's, it's me actually coming up with goals for my kids, things that I want to work on with them, things we want to um, work on together as a family, date night with my husband, spending time um, with my kids, spending time with my husband, spending time together as a family, um, recreation, or even like um, traveling. We love to travel. That's that's our thing as a family. We love to go to Disney World. We just went to Fort Myers Beach. So we actually want to plan our vacations out and actually put that on our goals. Like we want to take three family vacations this year, and then my husband and I want to maybe take two vacations that are just us, and that doesn't include traveling for my business. That's just an example, you guys, okay? Um, self-care, I'm, I'm horrible at self-care, believe it or not. Like, I would rather work than go do my nails. I know, like, it doesn't make sense, right? But it's all about balance. So if there's doctor appointments, if there's tendonitis in your wrist that I need to get fixed, um, it, if there's things that you don't make time for, you want to make more time for it, you're writing those things down. Okay, chiropractic, I'm, I'm, I love chiropractic. Um, so things like that, they're always like, I should do that, I should do that, I should do that. No, if you, if you want to do it, write it down on paper and make it happen. Obviously, business and finances, those might go hand in hand. I'm a firm believer, no matter what you do, you work, um, you work a full-time job, you work in corporate America, you own your own business, whatever you do, you always need a plan B, always. And that plan B should be your own business for another video 
for so many reasons, right? But at the end of the day, there is one person you can count on, girlfriend. You know who that is? That's you, girlfriend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You always should have a plan B. So if there's something like that, you're always thinking like, I should do that, or I don't know what that entails, or write it down if that's a goal. Finances, do you wanna get out of debt? Do you wanna pay off your credit card? Do you wanna build a dream house? Do you, what, do you, what is it that you wanna do? Do you wanna, um, last year we started our college education funds for our kids, okay? Last year, I decided to get crazy organized um, as far as my personal life. My house, myself, my kids, um, our schedules. We're, we run our home like a business now because I work from home, my husband works from home, and that's not the norm. So why would we treat our house like the norm? Um, so I had to sit down. It was, it was slowing me down. It was stressing me out every single day. So I had to sit down and take pen to paper and write out like if everything were to be like crazy, amazing, organized, what would that look like? That was my brain dump. For the organization and I spent an entire quarter just getting organized in our in our home okay so um, and then finances like do you need to buy a new car do you need do you want to start making you know X amount uh, you know I would love to make an extra three hundred dollars a month and then I would like to take that three hundred dollars a month and take my kids to Disney World by the end of the year and pay cash or take that money and put it into a college education fund. Um, nothing happens by accident. You have to make a plan. And we don't make a plan unless we mentally decide this is what we want and we're going after it. Thanks. Um, okay, so those are your categories to write out 10 goals that are important to you. Again, these are your goals, what you're passionate about, what you want to make happen this year. And here's the other thing, like, don't worry about what everybody else thinks. Don't worry about, like, if I write this down, what is my spouse going to think? What's my best friend going to think? What's my mom going to think? What are other people going to think if I write this down? Guess what? Who cares? It's your life. They're not living your life. Don't live your life for somebody else because they're not doing that for you. Okay? So at the end of the day, you're the only person that can make you happy. So it just be honest in writing down what you want to see happen in your life. And then number three is... Um, Three reasons why people fail. And this is meant for, for me to share with you if maybe you're already doing this. If you've already tried this in the past and it isn't working out for you the best that it can be. And any questions, go ahead and drop them and I'll answer them as I'm, as I'm talking here. Um, but here's the three reasons I think that people fail in this journey and I only say this from personal experience, from what I didn't know then to what I know now. And that is, number one, it's really hard to put your goals on paper. Think about when you want to lose weight. I think everybody can relate to this. Think about when you want to lose weight and you're like, okay, I need to lose weight. But it's one thing to think that, and it's another thing to actually put on paper, like I want to lose 10 pounds. Why is that so hard? Because we have to, we're mentally committing now to those 10 pounds versus just being like, yeah, I just I need to lose some weight to feel better. It could be five pounds, it could be six pounds. It doesn't really matter. Do you know what I mean? So it's one thing to think about it, and it's another thing to actually commit. That's what you're doing. And you're only committing to yourself, right? But actually committing to yourself is the most important person in the world you should be committing to with your own goals, okay? So people are scared to write down big goals or they just don't know how in the aspect that we're afraid if we put this goal down on paper, now we actually have to make it happen. And at the end of the day, 
that is, yeah, you do. And like what's holding you back, right? Um, okay, so don't be afraid. Goals are wishes on paper. In two months from now, you're gonna look back at these goals and you might say, I don't know why I wrote that one down because right now that doesn't align with my life and what has currently happened in my life. And you can cross it off and you can change it and you can write a new one through your goals, right? So it's not like you're like inking your life away, but you are making a, you are making a commitment, okay? Number two is, under why three three reasons why people fail is um, this is this was me this was me I didn't know how to reverse engineer those big goals I didn't know how to plan it out so number two is we don't know how to reverse engineer a big goal and map it out on paper so let me explain that what should I explain that with maybe um, organization so. <clears throat> when I say it, when I organized my life last year, like I could have wrote a book. Um, actually, I did read a book. Okay, so here's the thing. We think like people are either organized or they're not, right? Because I'm not. I'm the girl that grew up with the room that you had literally had to like pick up the clothes to look for the top you wanted to wear. I mean, like I'm the big vision hot mess all over the place, but somehow I get where I need to go. Like, I'm not organized. But it's not true that you're either organized or you're not. That's that's not true. Organization is just like anything else. It's a skill. So if you want to be organized, it's just like anything else. You need to go read a book. You need to watch a video. You need to watch a webinar. Go to a seminar. Watch, Google it on YouTube. Um, someone else has figured it out. Are you willing to do the research? And are you willing to do the work to get organized? Does that make sense? So I would write down, like I said, in a perfect, in my perfect world, what would make me less stressed? What would make me feel like I had more control over my day, which makes me happier and more productive and allows me to hit some other goals that are on that sheet of paper, right? So it's writing down like it's a brain dump and it's literally writing down every single little thing I would need to do to get organized. And for me, the first one is admitting I don't know how to be organized. I don't know exactly what that means. So the first thing I'm going to do is go on Amazon and buy a book <laughs> or look for a podcast. Find someone else who's figured it out and I connect with that person and I can learn from that person. Um, and so then I just make like a big brain dump of everything that I want to achieve. That's what I mean by reverse engineering your big, um, your bigger goals. Um, if you want to take your kids to Disney World by the end of the year and pay cash, how much does it take, how much money do you need and then breaking that up over a 12 month calendar. And then how are you gonna make that extra income to actually make that happen? Are you gonna clean out your closet and sell it? Are you gonna take those shoes and eBay them? Are you going to work a second business? Are you gonna work a second job? Are you, like how are you gonna make that income to make that happen? Anything and everything is possible, you guys. It's all in your mindset, okay? So that's number two, and I and for me, that's the hardest part. Writing the goals down and all of that, like that for me is easy, but learning how to reverse engineer it and then plan it out for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days at a time was the hardest part, okay? And then number three is, um, three reasons why people fail is they don't stay accountable on a daily basis, okay, um, to make it happen. So and these these are some things that I do. And again, if you're interested in me running a one-week uh, goal-setting workshop, I can do that. What I do is I take these uh, 10 goals and then I put them on a huge post-it. You see I have uh, one in the back here for something else. I'll write them out on a huge post-it. They'll go in my office. Before I had an office, 
I had a dining room that I used to sit at and work at and the goals would be up in my dining room. And, you know, I know that sounds weird because people would come over and they would be like, they would be reading my goals. And they're like, wow. Now they weren't there for other people. They were there for me. So I post them in a place where I see them every single day. But then also like my husband sees them, um, the people that are closest to me, like in my circle, in my life, and they see them and maybe you don't want to share all those goals with everybody and I think that's fine but the, there's a level of accountability in me telling my husband this is what this is what I want to do this year this is where I want to go and then making sure that aligns with our family right and that aligns with his goals too um, so I post them where I can see them every single day and then you have to have a plan in place. You have to, I wrote it down. Hang on. I, uh, where did I write that down at? Oh, right here. You have to get organized. You have to say, uh, make a plan. You have to sacrifice. You didn't like that, did you? Um, you have to sacrifice to achieve. So what do I mean by sacrifice? Like there's 24 hours in a day right? We all have the same amount of time. And if you have a goal and you want to make that goal happen, but maybe it's every single day, you need an hour a day to do this. Maybe it's an hour to work out. Maybe it's an hour to um, sit down and map out and get organized or purge through your closets. Or maybe it's like to sit down and watch education to learn how to build a new business. Whatever that hour is for, for example, where's that hour going to come from? It has to come off of your your uh, daily schedule right now. So does that mean giving up The Bachelor? I hate giving up The Bachelor. Come on. No, but seriously, like that's what I mean by sacrifice. So it's just you prioritizing your time and saying, this is what I want to happen this year. So because of that, I'm going to DVR The Bachelor. And if I get this done all week, then I can sit down and then I'll watch The Bachelor. You know, I'm just using that as an example, but we're all crazy busy. But I could do another video just sharing with you guys every day that I get up and I get dressed every day like just getting dressed putting makeup on if I put makeup on I definitely don't do that every day I'm listening to a podcast every day when I'm in the shower and I get out of the shower the podcast is still playing so maybe that's 15 minutes, but 15 minutes every single day, I'm learning a skill that's moving me forward to hitting a goal that I want to hit in 2018, whether that's on organization or if it's on nutrition for uh, my kids, learning about that, or if it's learning uh, social media skills for my business. So we have time. We just have to get organized and plan out our day and maybe give them some things up temporarily to hit some goals that are going to change your life, that are going to make you happier at the end of the day. Isn't that what it's all about? We create happiness. We create it. Okay, so any any questions? I hope this was helpful. Um, I do have a one-week goal-setting uh group. So if that's something you're interested in joining, just comment below this video. It's free. Or if there's anything that, um, anything else I can answer for you or, or dig deeper on. So if not, thanks for watching. I encourage you to, at the end of this video, grab a pen and paper, write out your 10 goals, post them where you can see them every day, and uh, hold yourself accountable. Thanks. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys. Cheers. Have a great weekend.